Get your silver cups ready. It's Kentucky Derby time, and that means <laughs> crazy hats, beauty, eh? <laughs> and mint juleps. The mint julep is a cocktail often associated with horse racing. It's been the official drink of the Kentucky Derby since 1938, when it was served in a souvenir glass for 75 cents a drink. <laughs> 75 cents a drink. Uh, hey, I'll take six. <laughs> this May, during the 144th Kentucky Derby, there'll be countless bartenders serving up countless mint juleps, roughly 127,000 of them, to the thirsty Derby and Oaks race attendees. Some race goers today will pony up as much as $1,000 for a mint julep made with Woodford Reserve premium bourbon and served in a commemorative silver cup and a gold-plated sipping straw. But wait, <laughs> that's not even the most expensive mint julep available. You can purchase one of Woodford's Royal Cups, which go for a whopping $2,500 a piece. <laughs> These mint juleps are served in a gold-plated cup and include a silver sipping straw. Ooh, a silver sipping straw. Ooh. Mint from Morocco, ice from the Arctic Circle, and sugar from the South Pacific put these mint juleps in a class of their own. All the money raised goes to local equine charities. So here's the question. Is the mint julep really a Kentucky thing? Well, yes and no. Its origin, like a lot of cocktails, is somewhat muddled. <laughs> it's widely believed that the julep originated in Persia, or at least nearby. The name of the drink is derived from the Persian word gulab, and the Arabic word julab, meaning rose water, which is simply made by steeping rose petals in water. When this drink was introduced to the Mediterranean region, some say southern France, the people there replaced the rose petals with mint, because it was indigenous to the area. It's thought that the julep then crossed the Atlantic where cognac was replaced with peach brandy and then later on whiskey. By 1837, the mint julep reached Britain thanks to the British Royal Naval officer and novelist, Captain Frederick Marriott. So the story goes, during his tour of America, Captain Marriott was woken up early one morning by a ship slave who had been up all night drinking what he called a julep. The captain popularized the drink by bringing it to Europe through his writings about the celebrations of the United States 4th of July. And did you know that he and Charles Dickens were acquaintances? Can't you see the two of them discussing literature and partaking in a couple of juleps? <laughs> and then there's the legend where a man was searching near the Mississippi River for water to add to his bourbon. When he saw mint growing wild, he put a few leaves into his libation and voila, the mint julep was born. A wives' tale indeed. Most historians agree that the mint julep evolved within Virginian high society during the 1700s or early 1800s. Silver julep cups were also being offered as prizes at Kentucky County Fairs, which would be early evidence of the state's association with the famous cocktail. Over the centuries, too, the drink was consumed almost strictly as medicine because mint is a calming and soothing herb used to aid in upset stomach or indigestion. One of the first printed references to the drink was in John Davis's 1803 book, Travels of Four and a Half Years in the United States of America. In his book, a mint julep was said to be a, a dram of spirituous liquor that has mint steeped in it, taken by Virginians of a morning. It wasn't specified what spirit was used, but it's safe to say that whiskey was among the choices, as was Geneva, which is a very distinctive style of juniper spirit and forerunner to a London dry gin style. And in his 1862 book, The Bartender's Guide, How to Mix Drinks by American bartender Jerry Thomas, he calls for cognac, four sprigs of mint, some sugar, and a dash of Jamaican rum, and garnish with berries and orange slices. He also lists a julep variation made with gin, and one calling for pineapple, as well as uh, the now whiskey version. What went into your julep depended not only what was available, but also your social class at the time. 
It's said that bourbon became most closely associated with the mint julep because the poor farmers couldn't afford the imported spirits, so they'd use bourbon instead. Originally a morning drink, the julep would have been kind of like the equivalent of having a cup of coffee today to wake you up. A few sips and the farmers would be ready to face the long day ahead of them. Also most notable and a very well-liked politician, <laughs> wait, <laughs> very well-liked politician? <laughs> that don't make a lick of sense. <laughs> a very well-liked politician from the great Commonwealth of Kentucky, Senator Henry Clay, likely introduced the drink to the famed Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. around the time it opened in 1847. Clay's journals indicate he made his juleps with mellow bourbon, aged in oak barrels, and probably ended up saying something like, uh, this is what the good folks in Kentucky drink to cool off the humid summers in the bluegrass state. <laughs> and it was Marvin Chester Stone that patented the modern drinking straw made of paper in 1888. It's believed he came up with the idea while drinking a mint julep on a hot day in Washington, D.C. Since then, the mint julep has been enjoyed by many famous figures, including Teddy Roosevelt, who made up his own recipe. F. Scott Fitzgerald, well, he immortalized it in his famous novel, The Great Gadsby. And Scarlett O'Hara in Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind. Yeah. His breath in her face was strong with bourbon whiskey, mingled with the faint fragrance of mint. <laughs> While the origins and proper preparation of the mint julep have been debated for a very long time, one thing is certain. When made right, the balance of sweet, mint, iciness, and booze can be a refreshing delight. Wild horses couldn't stop me from making this thing. <laughs> so let's make one. It's all about the mint in a mint julep and the mint julep cup. Now I really recommend taking the cup and for a couple hours, just throw it in your freezer, get it nice and cold, cause it's gotta be cold, all right? Man, it's, you know, it's getting hot in here. I'm gonna take this uh, jacket off. That's much better. I feel more comfortable. <laughs> okay, we got mint. And um, you want, well, it depends how minty you want it. But I've got a good bunch, maybe 10 to 12 mint leaves. And you want just the mint leaves because the stems tend to have a little bitterness going on there, right? Next, we have some simple syrup. I'm gonna use about a half an ounce. Perfect. And we want to grab our muddler and you want to be really, really gentle with muddling. You just want to extract that wonderful smell. And if you muddle too hard, it gets a little bitter. It gets a little grassy, you know? And that should do it. Very gentle. And you know, if you don't have a muddler, you can use the back of a wooden spoon or you could even take a piece of mint all your mint and, and just rub the inside of the glass. Next is our bourbon. I've got the Woodford Reserve. Selected as the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby and the historic Churchill Downs, this Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey races into the glass with an inviting amber color. At 45.2% alcohol by volume or 90.4 proof, on the nose it's aromas of sweet vanilla apricot, caramel, and spice. Soft and quite rounded with flavor notes from bold grain and wood to sweet aromatics, fruit, and floral notes which are followed up by a long, complex finish. Yeah, straight Kentucky bourbon. And we want, well, how strong do you like it? Um, two and a half ounces. Looking good. And you want to grab some crushed ice now. And it's got to be crushed ice, not cubed, because you want to chill this drink down really fast. All right? And we're just going to put a little bit in and give it a little stir with our spoon. Very gentle. Oh, yeah. Very gentle. A little more crushed ice. Give it that snow cone effect. 
I can see why the Southerners would drink this on, on such a hot, hot day. And we're gonna grab our silver sipping straw and uh, poke a little hole in there for our garnish of mint. And I got a little bouquet of mint here, a few leaves. How pretty is that? Oh yeah. And an optional thing is a little bit of icing sugar. Sprinkled over top. Nice. And a straw. Oh, and you put the straw real close to the mint so you can get the, the aroma. Let's give it a try. Oh, <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> you know, I'm holding this all wrong. You've got to uh, either hold it by the top or the bottom. And the reason you do that is you wanna keep it as frosty, icy, cold as you possibly can get it. And, and you look at all this wonderful frost coming up on the glass. You know, if you don't have a julep cup, a silver julep cup, you could use a rock glass. But a rock glass is an insulator and a silver cup, well, it's a conductor and it keeps your drink nice and frosty cold. And that's what you want to do when you're sitting under the hot sun in the south. I do declare, it's no wonder that the mint julep rose to popularity in the south. What could be more refreshing than an iced mint beverage on a sweltering summer day? Life is good. You know what it needs? <laughs> More bourbon, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> I'm on Patreon now. Yeah, for just a few dollars a month, you get access to things that nobody else sees. You get bloopers, you get uh, podcasts, newsletters, and sneak peeks. You get a whole whack of stuff that you're gonna love. So become one of my booze hounds and help support the show. This stuff gets expensive, and every little bit goes back into the show. Thanks in advance. Be a winner, make a mint julep. Why? Because they are so refreshing. You know, I'm just gonna sit on my veranda in my rocking chair and just while away the hours. Now, hit the subscribe button, check out some other videos. You know what? I'm gonna pop in a new garnish. <laughs> If you don't hit the subscribe button, it's off to the glue factory. Yeah, baby.